This is the Black Pot, aka Kukushunamo, where we speak truth to power. Now, here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we'd only just criticize to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. This is the Black Pot. Mm -mm -mm. And I want to say thank you so much. I ap appreciate you and I love you. This is the day the Lord has made. And I'm most, most excited to be with you. Now from the news read, we'd always endeavor to keep it real. This is the Black Porter. And today we have a number of issues we need to look at. And I needed to come along. Now the very first story we are looking at today is coming from Ghana Web. And it says... Mm -mm -mm. Interesting times ahead. It says Akufu Ado is Ghana's most distinguished legal practitioner. And this is the Chief Justice. I read again. Akufu Ado is Ghana's most distinguished legal practitioner. And this is the Chief Justice. Now let's see. Chief Justice Gertrude Tokuno has described President Anado Dankwa Akufu Ado as Ghana's foremost lawyer. According to her, Akufu Ado in his days as a lawyer and now as president has been a champion of justice adding that he has also actively supported the judiciary since becoming president we appreciate the strong support we have received from the office of the president now the culmination of this support is the presence of his excellency with us this morning she said in remarks at the opening of a conference in accra oh my god now, the event was the inauguration of the two, 2024 Africa Conference of the International Association of Women Judges. And I'll leave it here. Now, my brother, my sister, the Chief Justice was handpicked just recently and put in her position her present position as Chief Justice by the man who is being praised right now, Nana Kufuado. My brother, my sister, I said the Chief Justice Gertrude Tokuno was handpicked and put in her position as Chief Justice by Nana Rudanko Kufuado. Now, if the Chief Justice actually said this, and I doubt if she didn't say it, or else it will not get published by Ghana Web, one of the most authentic sources of news online. That the president is the most distinguished legal practitioner, then our legal situation in Ghana is a ghost. If the president is the most distinguished legal practitioner in Ghana, then Ghana has no legal system. A man who is a known clearing agent, a man who prejudices cases that are still in court, a man who would go ahead and sign a certain bill before parliament even gets to hear about it, is this the foremost distinguished legal practitioner in the country? It's a mockery. It is a mockery for the nation to see Nana Kufuado as the most distinguished lawyer. It's a shame. I don't know what Yoni Kulandi and the rest of them. Yoni Kulandi, lawyer Tadio Sori, and all the other wonderful astute legal brains we have in this country would say about this but politics can always take any dimension it's a shame this president has no respect for justice this president has no respect my brother my sister for the legal system in this country to 
this is a precedent. Who goes ahead to sign a certain bill before parliament even gets to hear about it? We all heard about the road tolls. How they went ahead, my brother, my sister, to sign it into action. At the time, parliament had not even heard about it. A bitteral action. We all know the CC that the power issue that came up. Mr. President was the very first to come out and say, I know you shall be exonerated because you are a good woman. We all heard about Galamse issues. My brother, my sister, a long white paper that was presented to the president. He prejudiced his contents even before action was taken to investigate. Is this supposed to be a good lawyer? A lawyer who many people think and say that he has no certificate. My brother, my sister, whatever it is, I, if this president was the only lawyer in Ghana, I will never ever seek justice with any court in this country. Should I say it again? If Mr. President was the only lawyer in Ghana, I will never seek justice in any Ghanaian court. Write it down. I said, if Mr. President was the only lawyer in Ghana, I will never seek justice in any Ghanaian court. It's almost like the cockroach seeking justice in the court of the fowls. It's a shame that the Chief Justice will say this, and it tells you the kind of Chief Justice we have. These are people, my brother, my sister, who we all thought would do so well by virtue of the fact that they were put in a certain position. All of a sudden, they don't think neutral anymore. They become political, partisan. In fact, it's a gloomy day for the legal environment in Ghana. It's a shame that such a man will be called the foremost legal brain in the country. I leave it here. Now the next thing I want to look at, my brother, my sister, is also taken from Ghana Web, and it says, Haruna Idrisu linked to over 2.5 million US dollar bribe from South African business. And I read, News 24, a major news portal in South Africa has published a report alleging that an indigenous company that did some work in Ghana paid bribes to some top politicians. Now, the report specifically mentioned Tamale South Member of Parliament, Haruna Idrisu, who allegedly benefited from bribes to the tune of over 2.5 million American dollars. In fact, an equivalent of 47 million rands in South Africa. Now, the News 24 investigative report was into the activities of siblings Rochelle and Nishani Singh, who operated the Ghana Infrastructure Company, GIC, between 2017 and 2022. Now, portions of the report gave a breakdown of how different sums of money were transmitted to Haruna through others and in some cases, financial support for projects related to him. Between 2015 and 2020, Nishani Singh used several methods to pay Idrisu directly or to others at his request or for his benefit at least 47 million rands. The majority of the money was paid directly from GIC's account to various suppliers or to GIC's director in Ghana, Asuma Dukurugu. The report said, adding that the amount was exclusive of amounts paid for several overseas trips to London and at least one trip to Indonesia and South Africa. The report also mentioned a former MP for Ejuso, but did not drill into details of how he benefited. Kwabna Uusu, Aduomi's involvement was likely linked to some road subcontracts that GIG got. Adonu, Aduoni is not a signatory to the contracts, but in his capacity as Deputy Roads Minister, he was in charge of the departments responsible 
for the administration of the bits most of the deals were awarded on a sole source basis wow so what is haruna idrisu saying to this one also published by ghana web he says the following are full details of a response by the member of parliament for Tamali South Haruna Idrisu concerning a supposed bribery allegation involving 2.5 million American dollars. And he says, Re Mure murders the sinks 1 billion rands Ghanaian empire that the Mure is threatening to destroy. My attention has been drawn to the above field, above titled um, publication published on the 30th of May 2024 by News 24 South African News website on its portal www.news24.com. In my long public service career, I have grown accustomed to being the subject of false publications that seek to impugn my reputation or in one way or the other uh, implicate me in uh, matters that I am clueless about. Generally, I have considered attempts of this nature to be a hazard of the job and have usually ignored them however the allegations contained in this particular publication which are sought to implicate me in bribery allegations which according to news 24 in an attempt to uncover in in an attempt to cover up has led to the death of two persons are so grave that i cannot help but respond i leave it here it's a very long rebuttal my brother my sister we're going to look at it deeper in the interim it is not new when we hear about bribery especially amongst our parliamentarians parliament has become so rotten People have turned it into a certain boxing ring where they go and punch each other. Parliament has become so rotten, my brother, my sister, that an MP, a sitting MP, Honorable Ayarga, told the whole house how his side was being bribed in order to push in a certain candidate who had been uh, appointed by the president and had come for vetting. We all have heard this time and again. Honorable Ablakwa, a sitting MP, also attested to this. I am not surprised that at the end of the day, we are hearing that, oh, bribery, corruption, and blah, blah, blah. This involves 2.5 million American dollars. Can we look into this deeper? In some countries, my brother, my sister, some people would be asked to go home and sit whilst investigations went ahead. I don't know what the laws of this country say about a sitting NP asked to go and sit down whilst, implication, whilst investigations go on. My brother, my sister, we have to take some of these things seriously. Corruption is responsible for a huge flight of our cash. In fact, the people's money, year after year. If we were able to deal with corruption, Ghana will load money to America in 10 years. Should I say it? If we were able to deal with corruption in this country, Ghana would load money to America. In 10 years, we have gold that America doesn't have, the quality of our gold. We have cocoa that no other country in the world has. I'm talking about the quality. We have yams, no country in the world. In fact, 
has that kind of a quality yam. The closest to our yam is the Jamaican yellow yam, which is so many several miles away from the Ghanaian yam. We have a lot of things in this country, including lithium, that are of top quality. Our oil is of top quality. Anything we have in this country is on top of the ladder. Yet, because of corruption, we are nowhere near our goal of general welfare for the people. Can we have an independent investigation into this? I wonder why some of these allegations come up and nobody seems to be interested. Cecilia Dapa issue swept under the carpet. We are hearing about some jingoisms and uh, shenanigans by the Iyoko and, of course, the Office of the Special Prosecutor. It's a shame. We heard about the Airbus saga. All of a sudden, everywhere has gone cold. What kind of a nation is this that has no respect? my brother my sister for investigations if this was america if this was england they would drag you president or former president to be investigated trump is being investigated right now my brother my sister people have been involved in heinous crimes yet we all sit back and watch as if nothing happened Wyoming is still walking around there. He pays peanuts to the nation when he has stolen so much money according to what the court said. The thief is still walking around. Anytime there is a call for investigations, we have a way of making it partisan. Oh, he's our thief. Therefore, he's not a thief. Oh, when the fundamentals are weak, Depending on which party is in power, the exchange rate would expose you. Listen to it again. When the fundamentals are weak, depending on which party is in power, the exchange rate would expose you. Such jokers in power. I leave it here. I'm going to look at the last one and I'll be done. I'm not going to spend more than four minutes on this. And this is also from Ghana Web. It says, you don't respect God and me. Obinim bans five CDs, ten CD offertory in viral video. And I read, the founder of the International God's Way Church, Bishop Daniel Obinim, has warned his congregation not to pay any amount below 20 Ghana cities as seed offering during church services. According to him, any form of seed or thanksgiving offering should be above 20 cities. He explained that if the amount is less, he wouldn't entertain it in the church. In a viral video where he was addressing his church, Obinim is head calling on people who have placed five cities and ten cities on the altar to come for their money before it turns into curses for them. He said an offering of thanksgiving to God should be higher. All those who have come to put money here should come for their money. Anyone who has placed money here should come for it. No more ten cities, no more five cities. Why? Don't you respect God? That means you don't even respect God and myself. Come for your money. Come for your money yourself because if I pick the money, it will become a curse on you. <laughs> Obinim is one of the fraudulent gods of men that we have in this nation. And he himself has said it. I thought he had become a new person. A man who bleaches from morning till night. A man born black who wants to be white. A man who claimed he was an angel. And he had some charlatan men of God support him. That yes, he's actually an angel. Angel Obinim. How many of us have forgotten Angel Obinim? 
The angel who appears in our dreams and gives us lotto numbers. The angel who appears in our dreams and gives us billion, million. Memo billion cities. Memo million cities. R and L not respected. A man who appears in our dreams, slapping us in our dreams for doing evil. A man who slaps little children in the church, claiming that they are sleeping around. A man who steps on the stomachs of pregnant women to exorcise witches inhabiting the stomach. A man who can, can conjure passports from wherever they are to appear before him. A man who can conjure money right in the church and he conjures only coins in the church, yet he expects you to bring paper money more than 20 Ghana cities. He himself recently said that he lied to the church when he told the church he could turn into a snake. He lied to the church when he told the church that he could turn into a water, a.k.a. Wawo, a.k.a. snake. He lied to the church that he could turn into any animal and go anywhere. Yet when he's going to Germany to visit, he wants a visa. Why don't you just turn into a bird? Better still an albatross that can fly several years without stopping. Turn into an albatross and fly into Germany. You don't need a visa as a bird. You don't even need a visa as a snake. Just continue to hiss and continue to slit your way into any country of your choice. We've been taken for food for too long. A man who calls Jesus, me Papa Jesus. Who Papa Jesus cry? Who kind Bible? Where did we get the widow's mind from? Jesus, Efres, Efres, Cambrano, Assembena, see ye, or more moody's cassia bayon, Mammy Bacundi, we see cadet coins, or the two are there when a Jesu can, 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 no be a sre, Jesu freno, catch and send it dear no mum, Nanyame, any a Jesu, Hallelujah. God was so excited about her offering because it came from the bottom of her heart. Obinim said, he has no respect for any bottom, let alone any heart. All he has respect for is the money. It doesn't matter where you get the money from. You can murder and get the money. You can steal the money. You can do Sakawa and get the money. After all, he's even been praying for Sakawa boys in his church. A man of God like that should be banned. Engage in so much illegality, money laundering, my brother, my sister, and stealing. If this was South Africa, he would be banned. People like Bushiri have been banned from South Africa. Bleach-faced idiots who stand on the pulpit and disgrace Christianity and disgrace Jesus himself. They are still walking around with their faces bleached like their father Satan, asking people the amount of money they want for God and themselves. I'm so ashamed. On Sunday, you'll be shocked. Go to the church. You will see people. I thought the church had collapsed. The other day, he came out and said, people were not coming to the church anymore. He's found a few idiots to go to the church again, right? To God be the glory. Well, my name Black Rasta is being the Black Pot, aka Kukushunmo. Turn up, Sanya, while let's have my time, Sanya.